those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, let me know who's going to cook a big turkey. Cranberry juice. Wow. Refreshing. Oh my goodness, so good. I have to open my eyes wide. Let's start by giving our praises to the Most High, whose suit name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, whose suit name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwa Dash. Double honor to the elders and apostles, along with the Holy Spirit who taught us His truth. Honor to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, one third of the children of Israel which would be the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, according to scripture, who are the lost 12 tribes of Israel, who are returning back to the Most High by hearing and believing on his word so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. So we're back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. Hey, and this lesson is gonna be titled, Lived Deliciously. Again, the title is gonna be, Lived Deliciously. And what we saw um, here is a mukbang, um, which a mukbang, for those who don't know, is some kind of trend where people record themselves eating a whole bunch of food, stuffing themselves with a whole bunch of food on camera, eating $50, $100 worth of food all at once. And we see it's all kind of people doing this. It's been going on for years now. Yeah, we see white and Asian people doing it, but we don't care about them. You know, it's our people that got to get it together. And you saw the lady had spirits on her while she was eating. You know, because being a glutton, you know, that's a real spirit. That's a real thing. I mean, look at her. 
but we're going to hit Ecclesiastes 10 to 16. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child. That king is Esau Edom, the so-called white man. That land is America. America is a big playground for adults, as well as children. It's a playground for the wicked. And it says, and thy princes eat in the morning. That's why there's a new word in America called breakfast, you know, which didn't exist going back, you know, generations ago. Because the first thing people do when they wake up is want to eat, like we was going into yesterday, Thanksgiving. First thing people did when they woke up was ran to the kitchen. The first thing their mind was fixated on was eating, what they could stuff their face with. You know, nobody got up and watched the news to see what danger is lurking. You know, America's being invaded, you know, at the, at the southern border. All these foreign migrants coming here from all these other countries. There's a new pneumonia on the loose in China that's going to make its way over here. You know, it's mass shootings all over the place. You know, nobody watched the news, checked their phone to see if it was any danger. Nobody even looked out the window. You know what I'm saying? First thing they did was started eating. And then this lady here, she was talking about Thanksgiving while she was eating. She was already having Thanksgiving, but she was talking about Thanksgiving is coming up. So that's why the scripture say, woe to the land when thy princes eat in the morning. Hey, because when people are fixated and prioritize eating above all else, you destined for destruction. Like Esau, he sold his birthright for a uh, red pottage of lentils and meat. So he, he prioritized eating even over his own birthright, even over his own life. And that's our people, they the spirit of Esau. That's why this is a microwave society. Eating is prioritized above all else so this place is destined for destruction when you eat when you first wake up instead of looking for danger and hey, you're gonna fall and america is gonna fall this place is destined for destruction and when you look at previous destructions previous judgments that came on the world um those societies were fixated on eating and eating is deeper than somebody putting food in their mouth. It's you pleasing the flesh. Not only do people feed their flesh with food and drink, but uh, they also feed their flesh with uh, physical pleasure. Because these people like this, eating is like sex to them. It's a form of a pleasure. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. So, woe to the land when thy king is a child, and thy princess, thy people eat in the morning <clears throat> and that's why when we come um to the book of second Ezra 8 and 50 for many great miseries shall be done to them that dwell in the latter time that latter time is now that shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride so people walk in great pride they got pride and pride is like an appetite food is an appetite People got to feed their appetite for food. And, and pride is an appetite. People have to fuel their pride. You know, you don't just get pride automatically. It's something that's feeding your pride. <clears throat> People pride is fed with money, material wealth, status, reputation, a certain lifestyle, um, uh, women, money being worshipped or people may even walk in great pride because of food so the lord said again many great miseries is coming to them that have walked in great pride just like you have to feed your appetite pride is an appetite you know what i'm saying it's something that has to be filled on a constant basis so the thing to kill the pride of the people you just take away what's fueling it you take away what's fueling the pride. If it's money, the Lord gonna make you poor. If it's material wealth, the Lord gonna make you own nothing. 
if it's food that contributes to your pride, well, the Lord going to starve you. You know, you can just go down the list, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and then when we come to the book of Revelation 18 and 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Who is this? Her Lady Liberty, America. So come out of her, come out the ways of America, that ye be not partakers of her sins. So that you don't continue in the wickedness that's pushed out in this country. Hey, because being a glutton, that's a sin that ye receive not of her plagues. So don't partake in the ways of America so you don't be destroyed when this place is destroyed. It's going to be destroyed with the sword, with the pestilence, with the famine. Also, it's going to be topped off with the nuclear destruction. Now, what's the ways of America that we need to come out of? Well, let's jump to the book of Matthew 24 and 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. And what did we say earlier? That when you look at past destructions, the society, the, 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 the civilization that was wiped out, they was fixated on eating. But again, that's why I said, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. So before the flood, they was also doing mukbangs. They had spirits on them with uncontrollable eating, uh, uncontrollable appetite. But also they were marrying and giving to marriage, which we know uh, dating, you know, hookup culture is a big thing here in America. So again, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark so yeah while it was raining they were still eating they were still drinking they were still mukbanging they were still going on dates and hooking up with one another and knew not until the flood came and took them all the way so shall also the coming of the son of man be so this civilization this culture uh is a reflection of the ancient culture before the flood, which was fixated on eating and drinking, mug banging and hooking up. And guess what? People gonna be eating and drinking, hooking up until the missiles come and take them away. You know, not like people gonna be able to eat and drink and hook up, A, eh, because it's gonna be a sword out there, a famine and pestilence, but people gonna be doing these things until these plagues start to hit America. So when Revelation 18 and 4 say, come out of her, my people, come out the ways of the dominant culture, which is fixated on eating and drinking and hooking up. So, yeah, for her sins have reached unto heaven and Yahweh have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, fill to her double. So the level of wickedness that's been accumulated here in America and the Lord got a double cup filled with judgment. The Lord about to replace this place double for all her sins. And what did we get a minute ago? Second Ezra 8 and 50 for great miseries so coming to them who walked in great pride. So the Lord is going to take whatever pride you operated in and double the miseries onto you. Let's continue how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. See that? See that? The people live deliciously before the flood. People are living deliciously before the coming of the Son of Man. Because, uh, what did we, who's down thing playing with me? What did we get? You know, in the days before the flood, um, it would be also before the days of the return of Yahweh Shah. They would be parallel. Real quick, let me look up this word deliciously on my phone. I just want to see what's come up. Deliciously, in a way that is highly pleasant to the senses, especially taste. And we see how this woman is operating. It's, it's, it's highly pleasant to her senses in terms of something that she can taste. We're going to mute this and let this play just to see what the scriptures is talking about. Because this is a perfect narration of what we're reading about. How much she have glorified herself. Americans glorify themselves, you know, that's going into their pride. 
what's fueling their pride. You know, like a car runs on fuel. Well, again, people pride runs on what fuels it. So that would be what you glorify yourself with. If you glorify yourself with many partners, or the Lord gonna have you to die the death of a whore that's being ravished, you live by the sword. You glorify in that. You a murderer, you gonna die by the sword. If you a glutton, the Lord gonna allow you to die in a famine. If you live deliciously, you're gonna live undeliciously. But actually in the Blue Letter Bible, this word deliciously going into uh, luxuriously. So how much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, lived luxuriously, so much torment and sorrow give her. So the things that contributed to the glorification of yourself, that contributed to your luxury, the Lord is going to take that away from you. And that's what's going to cause the torment and sorrow. So for all the good things you Americans have had, the Lord got just as much of pain and suffering waiting for you, but double according to your level of weakness and pride. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, shall see no sorrow. So yeah, you know, they feel like they never see a rainy day. They feel like the food is always going to be there. They feel like their protection is always going to be there. So yeah, the Lord about to do something wicked to this place. So nah, I forgot to put up the precept, but we're going to go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Bear with me. We're going to go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to get chapter 11. We're going to get verse 16. You know, because it's a science to the great miseries that the Lord is bringing to the earth. See, it's all strategic. It's the ultimate design is well thought out. So again, when the Lord say, you know, how much she glorify herself and live deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. So everything that contributed to your pride, the Lord is just going to take it from you. And that's going to be the great misery that the Lord torments you people with. So wisdom of Sodom 11 and 16, that they might know that wherewith all a man sinneth by the same manner, also shall he be punished. So the method that you sin by is the method you're going to be judged by. If you kill by the sword, you're going to fall by the sword. If you live the life of a glutton, eating and drinking and mukbanging, that's what you're going to die by. You had an abundance of food, you're going to die for a lack of food. You had an abundance of partners as a woman, and you're going to die by having an abundance of partners ravish you. And just as Esau went all over the earth, uh, rape, robbing, murdering, destroying, blowing up people, you know, he's going to be blew up by the nuclear missiles. So again, that they might know that wherewith all a man sinneth, by the same also shall he be punished. So the famine is a necessary uh, 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 it's a necessary judgment that got to take place in the earth to kill the pride of the people and pride is a plague of the mind it's a sickness and the Lord is going to cure the inhabitants of the earth in the famine not to mention the famine is going to do these people good she was struggling breathing while she was eating and not to mention people do mukbangs with seafood like the like the like the sister that we saw here, you know, just disgusting, disgusting. So with all that a man or a woman sinneth, by the same also shall he be punished. So it's not gonna be no slurping on crab legs and lobster tails in the famine. It's not gonna be no stuff in your face in the famine. Now let me see if I can read this. All right, so. Now we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 4. We're going to get verse 6. 16. Moreover, he sent it to me, son of man. Behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem. You know, your food supply. And they shall eat bread by weight. Bread is a broad term for food. You're going to eat food by weight. And with care. Meaning you're going to be careful, be mindful of how much you eat. 
and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. So Lord said they're going to drink water and eat bread with astonishment. Let's see how this matches up with the video. Let, let, let's look at something real quick. Let's jump forward a little bit. You see how her eyes get crazy? What is she doing? She's eating in astonishment because of how pleasant it is to her. So just like she's eating in astonishment because of the abundance of food, she's going to eat in astonishment because of the lack of food. Let's read it again. They shall eat bread by weight and with care. They stuff in their mouth. They not being careful or mindful. Well, they not going to be doing that in the famine. They shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. So she's in astonishment and all right now. She's also going to be in astonishment when there is nothing to eat or it's only crumbs or slop or rotten food that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. So you fatten yourselves up. Now the Lord going to allow you to consume away. You know, in a famine, because of your iniquity, because of the pride that you walked in. And then is it be these same people who talk about poor people, who talk about people who got less food. You know, people who got less food, they actually in a better case than these type of folks right here. And then when we come to the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 5. Thus says Yahweh God of Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem. I have set in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh, because ye multiply more than the nations that are around you, and have not walked in my statutes, Neither have you kept my judgments, neither done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgment in the midst of thee, in the sight of the nations. Let's continue. And now will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. So the Lord said, Will he do to Jerusalem? He's going to do something which he had not done before. And this don't just apply to Jerusalem. This applies to all nations because the Lord is judging all nations. So again, and I will do indeed that which I have not done. And what's the Lord going to make that which he have not done? Therefore, the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat the fathers. And I will execute judgment in thee. And the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. So yeah, the Lord's going to cause the parents and the children, the people, young and old, to eat one another. And when the Lord says, I will do to thee the which I have not done, well, it's not that the Lord hadn't done this already. This already took place. But it's going to be a new thing for this lifetime. It's going to be cannibalism on a level that people have not seen before. So it's going to be uh, renewed in the earth. And then when we come to the book of Lamentations 4 and 7, 4 and 8, their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. So your skin will be sticking to your bone. Like the brother Kalab say, your stomach going to be touching your back. It is withered. It's going to be like a withered tree. It has become like a stick. High school used to draw the stick people. Well, people going to lose all this weight in the famine, and they're going to be like the stick people we used to draw. <laughs> the stick people we was drawing was foretelling America's future. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, meaning rot away, that slowly streaking through for the want of the fruits of the field. So, so people are going to be rotting away, uh, 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 bodies consuming themselves. 
you know, and, and that take weeks to happen. People starving for weeks. The hands of the pitiful women had sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. So sodden, another word for that would be to boil you, to roast, to cook. And I don't know if she's got children or grandbabies, but it's going to be women like her, pitiful women like her who cook their own children. Because she's so accustomed to eating so much. Hey, so yeah, a great famine is coming. It must happen. It got to happen. Look at these folks. And that's the whole reason why people in their pride come up against the word, despise the word. It's because they ate this morning. They eating lunch today. They just had a snack. They eating dinner tonight. They got food in their house for the next few weeks. Well, when people ain't ate nothing, they not going to have nothing to say against this word. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakwadash. Till next time, Shalom.